The Ryzen 7 9800X3D is the current king of gaming, but is it really worth it? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the Is It Worth It series, we've been helping you make the right choice by showing you just how much you can expect to increase performance with a drop-in upgrade. In this video, our focus will be on the current king of gaming, the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D, and specifically how it compares to the 97 700X, the 9600X, and the Intel Core Ultra 7 265K. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 10 games, I'm also going to share with you my pro tips for how to unleash performance locked inside these CPUs and demystify AMD's 3D vCache technology. And if you stick around, I will address the common perception that CPU choice doesn't matter at higher resolutions, something every PC user will definitely not want to miss. It's really not rocket science, so before we take a look at the benchmarks, let's jump straight into demystifying 3D vCache technology. AMD launched the Ryzen 7 5800X3D back in 2022, together with a revolutionary packaging technology called 3D vCache. There appears to be a lot of confusion within the broader community around what it is, and more importantly, the impact it has on games and professional workloads. AMD doesn't use it in all of their consumer CPUs, and there is a good reason why. So let's demystify this technology to help you decide whether it's right for you. 3D vCache is a packaging technology that stacks additional layers of cache on top of a CPU. Cache is a type of super fast memory that's built into the processor. The CPU stores information it needs to access frequently in the cache because it can access it much faster than system memory or RAM. The idea is that in giving the CPUs additional L3 cache, they'll have to utilize the system memory a lot less, particularly in tasks where there are a number of elements that need to be frequently fetched by the CPU, like in gaming. Instead of placing the cache next to the processor, as has been traditionally done, AMD is stacking the cache on top to minimize the size of the chip. It's a different way to lay out a processor, and thanks to advancements in how CPU makers put components on a chip, AMD is able to squeeze on more cache without making the CPU larger thereby reducing manufacturing costs. Every CPU has three levels of cache, with L1 cache being the smallest and fastest, L2 cache a little bigger and slower, and L3 cache the slowest and largest of them all. Each cache level is smaller in size, but faster in speed, acting as a memory chain to your processor that can serve up instructions as they're needed. AMD's 3D vCache is essentially just a larger secondary L3 cache that sits right on top of the CPU cores. L3 cache is much faster than system memory, which is why adding more of it can dramatically improve performance. By giving the processor access to such a large bank of additional temporary storage, it's able to store more information than it would normally have access to. This can make a large difference in applications like games, where some data needs to be repeatedly accessed. 3D vCache technology has the potential to accelerate gaming performance of processors by making them less sensitive to memory bandwidth and latency. So why not use it on all CPUs? In some applications, the additional cache doesn't do much to improve performance. In fact, because the presence of the extra vCache module increases heat within the CPU package, the CPU clock speeds need to be reduced to remain within acceptable thermal limits. As a result, these lower clock speeds will reduce performance in applications that don't leverage extra L3 cache, such as in Cinebench. That's why AMD doesn't just blanket all of its CPUs with 3D vCache. Second Gen 3D vCache was recently introduced with the launch of the 9800X3D to address X3D thermal concerns by placing the extra L3 cache underneath the CPU cores. With the extra memory sitting below the processor cores, those cores now have direct access to the cooler. As a result, this redesigned layout minimizes thermal resistance, allowing for better heat dissipation and better clock speeds compared to the first generation designs. This allowed AMD to significantly increase the clock speeds of the 9800X3D relative to the 5800 and 7800X3D chips. And also also allowed them to fully unlock the 9800X3D, providing users with the ability to increase clock frequencies even further. As mentioned earlier, the focus for this video is on the current king of gaming, the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D, and how it compares to the 9700X, 9600X, and 265K. The test systems being used to run the benchmarks are my Intel Arrow Lake and AMD AM5 open bench tables with the following components. For the Intel Arrow Lake test platform, for the motherboard, we have an MSI Meg Z890 Unify X. For the RAM, we have Team Group T-Force Extreme 48 gigabytes of DDR5 8800 at CL40. For the RAM cooler, we have an Olzai CRAM dual fan memory cooler. For the 
the GPU, we have an ASUS ROG Astral GeForce RTX 5090 OC Edition. For the CPU cooler, we have a Corsair IQ Link H170i RGB 420mm AIO. For storage, we have a 4TB Samsung 990 Pro NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Be Quiet Dark Power Pro 12, 1200 Watt 80 Plus Titanium Power Supply. For the AMD AM5 test platform, for the motherboard, we have an ASUS ROG Crosshair X870E Hero. For the RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo, 48 gigabytes of DDR5 8000 at CL36. For the GPU, we have an ASUS ROG Astral GeForce RTX 5090 OC Edition. For the CPU cooler, we have an ASUS ROG Ryo 3, 360mm AIO. For storage, we have a 4TB Samsung 990 Pro NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Corsair HX 1200i Platinum, 1200W power supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with the Astral RTX 5090 at default clocks. I used Thermal Grizzly Graphene Cryo Sheets and I applied a number of performance enhancing tweaks to each CPU. For all of the AMD Ryzen CPUs, I used a 48GB kit of DDR5 8000 RAM with the CAS latency lowered to 36. I then made the following tweaks to unlock max performance. 1. I set PBO to motherboard. 2. I set PBO Scaler to 2x. 3. I set the max CPU boost clock override to plus 200 megahertz. 4. I set a negative all-core curve offset of negative 30. 5. I turned Expo on, set CL to 36 and set refresh interval to 65535. And 6. I changed Windows Power Plan to high performance. A comprehensive step-by-step -step guide for how to implement all of these tweaks is contained within my What are the best settings for an AMD Ryzen CPU video. For the Intel Core Ultra 265K, I used a 48GB kit of DDR5 8800 CUDIM RAM with the CAS latency lowered to 40. I then made the following tweaks to unlock max performance. 1. I set the P cores to 5.5 and 5.3GHz. 2. I set the E cores to 4.8GHz. 3. I set the ring ratio to 4GHz, NGU fabric to 3.4GHz, and D2T interface to 3.6 GHz. 4. I set the performance preset in BIOS to MSI Extreme settings. 5. I turned XMP on, set CL to 40, and turned T Refi to 65 535. And 6. I changed the Windows Power Plan to high performance. A comprehensive step by step guide for how to implement all of these tweaks is contained within my recent How to Fix Intel Core Ultra CPU Performance video. The impact of these tweaks on performance is summarized in this table. As you can see, the increase in performance for the 9600 and 9700X was exceptional. This is due in large part to the low 65 watt default TDP set by AMD for these CPUs. By removing this constraint, you're able to unlock a significant amount of additional performance. For the 9800X 3D and 265K, the increase in performance was lower, but still in the low double digits, which shows that these CPUs were configured better at the factory. These tweaks also led to a significant reduction in latency for all CPUs, which should result in a smoother, more responsive and enjoyable gaming experience. One thing to note is that these increases in performance did result in an increase in temperature and power, especially for the 9600 and 9700X. So keep that in mind if you're planning to use these CPUs in a small form factor build. An important point to emphasize is that the performance boost that you're able to achieve will heavily depend upon silicon quality. There is no guarantee that your CPU will be stable with all of the tweaks outlined in this video. I would highly recommend running a CPU intensive test like Cinebench or 8064 after performing each tweak and running a memory stability tool like Kahu to make sure your system is in fact stable. In order to thoroughly test the CPUs, I ran two sets of benchmarks. To place maximum load on each CPU, I tested 10 games at 1080p with low settings, which should allow me to extract max performance from each CPU. To see if each CPU had an impact on GPU performance, I tested a smaller subset of benchmarks at 4K with ultra settings. These resolution settings combinations align well with typical gamer selections with 1080p low settings reflecting what most online first-person shooter gamers would likely use to achieve maximum frame rates, whereas 4K ultra settings reflect what most single-player gamers would do with a high-end CPU-GPU combination to extract max quality. I also added a new game to the benchmark suite, Doom the Dark Ages, which has been well-received and is a fantastic built-in benchmark. With the GPUs ready to go, let's check the benchmarks.
As you can see from the benchmarks, the 9800X3D put on a dominant display, beating all of the other CPUs by at least 15%. That said, a comment I see a lot, and one that I'm sure will pop up in the comments for this video, is that it's wrong to test at 1080p low settings because that's not how games are played, and that the choice of CPU doesn't matter at higher resolutions and game settings. Instead of trying to explain why this logic might be flawed, I thought it would be more helpful to look at some actual data. To see if your choice of CPU is relevant at higher resolutions, we can take a deeper look at some of the 4K Ultra benchmarks presented earlier in the video. As you can see from the benchmark results for Total War Warhammer 3, there is a significant increase in performance with the 9800X3D compared with the 9600X, and even more so with the 265K, which was able to generate around 60% higher 1% lows, which is very impressive. This result was repeated in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, a game that heavily loads the CPU, with the 9800X3D offering increases of up to 30% over the 9600X. So as you can see from these benchmarks, your CPU does indeed continue to play an important role in the performance that you're able to achieve in games, even when the game is GPU bound. Hopefully these results will help to dispel the myth that your CPU is not relevant at higher resolutions and graphic settings. So why test CPUs at low resolutions and graphic settings? Because it's the best way to see the relative performance between two or more CPUs. Heavily loading your CPU will allow you to see how each CPU will perform when really pushed, which can occur when a game has a lot of units on screen, such as in Total War Warhammer 3, needs to rapidly update the environment and track a lot of data, such as in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, or uses newer features like upscaling, such as in Cyberpunk 2077. It will also allow you to choose a CPU for better longevity, one that will be able to keep up with future GPU launches since a more powerful GPU will place a heavier load on your CPU. So while the actual 1080p benchmark data presented might not represent the frame rates that you will experience at higher resolutions and graphic settings, it's exactly what's needed to make an informed buying decision. In this video, I tested the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D, widely renowned as the current king of gaming, against the 9700X, 9600X, and 265K to see if it's really worth it. As you can see from the results, the 9800X3D put on a dominant display, winning every single benchmark. However, at 4K it was a different story, with the 9800X3D unable to decisively win any of the benchmarks. In fact, in what was a somewhat surprising result, it was the 265K that won or drew every single game tested. If we dig a little deeper and look at the average performance across 10 games, we see that the 9800X3D is able to offer a 15 to 18% increase in average FPS and a 14 to 21% increase in 1% lows, which is fantastic. But again, when we switch to 4K, this margin not only reduces, but the 265K is able to outperform the 9800X3D across the five games we tested. This is a truly remarkable result and is similar to the result we saw with the 285K. If we now look at power efficiency, it's clear that both the 9800X3D and 265K excel, with the 265K pulling ahead in 3D Mark, while the 9800X3D is more efficient in Cinebench. This is an impressive result for Intel given just how power hungry Raptor Lake CPUs were. This also clearly shows that when you unlock the power limits on the non-X3D chips, the efficiency drops significantly. Moving on to professional workloads, you can see that in most applications a 265K wins, which isn't surprising given the additional cores that it offers. This is especially true in applications like Blender and 7-Zip, where the 265K offers a distinct and meaningful advantage. But what happens when we look at cost? The 9800X3D is currently selling for $450, which is approximately $150 more than the 9700X, $168 more than the 265K, and a whopping $246 more than the 9600X. However, if you add in the cost of RAM, then the 9800X3D platform only ends up being around $80 more expensive than the 265K platform, which needs expensive high-speed CUDIM RAM to perform well. If you now convert these platform costs into gaming value or FPS per dollar, then the 9600X dominates, offering around 30% better value in gaming when compared against the 9800X3D. This is not surprising given just how much cheaper the 9600X is compared with the 9800X3D. If we look at a plot of FPS 
GS Padola vs Price, we see something very interesting. The 9600X and 265K fall on the exact same trend line. This means that the 265K will offer identical value to the 9600X if it drops to the same price, which it did recently during the Prime Day sales. As high-speed Kudim RAM prices also drop, the 265K becomes a much more compelling option to consider. So is the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D really worth it? Given its exceptional performance and power efficiency, there is no question that the 9800X 3D is an amazing gaming CPU. The only real problem is the price. Due to its popularity, it continues to sell at only 6% less than when it launched in November of 2024, compared with a 30% price reduction for the other CPUs tested. If you want the best gaming experience, then the 9800X3D is the CPU to buy. But the question of whether it's really worth it needs to also consider price, not just performance. So if you do consider the price, then the answer is no, it's not worth it. If you're gaming at 4K ultra settings, the 265K is a better option, especially if you also use your PC for professional workloads where it clearly dominates. That said, the 9600X is the clear king of value and is an excellent overclocker, but its performance is really lacking in some games and professional workloads. So that leaves the 9700X. It doesn't win in any category, but it's close enough to the 9800X 3D that at its current price, it's able to offer significantly better value without the large drops in performance suffered by the 6-core 9600X. As a result, and perhaps somewhat surprisingly, this is the CPU that I would recommend for most PC gamers. If you configure the 9700X properly, it offers the best combination of performance, value, and overclockability, making it extremely tough to beat. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's LEGO. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Is It Worth It upgrade series. To celebrate hitting the 25,000 subscriber milestone, I'll be giving away a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D CPU and other prizes to one lucky viewer. Details on how to enter are listed in the description below. Good luck and bye for now.